NLTP Act. It was introduced and enacted during our time under the leadership of Sri S.C. Jamir, who is still a living personality till then. I was in the cabinet, in his cabinet. We were forced to introduce and enact it in Nagaland Legislative Assembly. We agreed and we did it. It was done in 1987. So many years of experience, we have seen what is prohibition in Nagaland. It has become highly controversial issue. But let us see this act, enforcement of this act vis-a-vis -vis what our leaders are doing. When I say leaders, men, those who run the roost of the state. Example. If you go to Nature Resort, owned by no other person than the Chief Minister, Nipiriyo, it is his venture. If you go to little across uh, Shoba area, there is a Nune Resort. If we go to Hotel Vivor at Kohima, these are few ventures owned by the chief minister himself. Everything is available. Indian made foreign liquor plus expo uh, imported liquor any of any brand. And people also thought that there are night, night clubs in Dimapur, which starts after 10 p.m. till 2 to 3 a.m. next day. What do they do? Everybody is drinking. Everywhere spurious drinks are available. So it has become a fallacy, a mockery, on the part of the churches in Nagaland, the missionaries and the church workers, spiritual leaders, they say Nagaland for Christ. Yes, it is a Christian state. But our population or our populace is much more than people who have lived in the story of like Sodom and Gomorrah. This is happening. When the leader or the leaders, they cannot control themselves, how is it that we should continue with prohibition? They will order the security forces to go and seize, raid, and so on. Some people's house, 
But what, what happens to, what about Nuna Resort? What about Nature Resort? What about Hotel Beaver at Kohima? And so on. Needless to emphasize, but this is the actual thing happening. For the last three days, we have been saying Naga people, they are shouting slogans and offering their prayers like Bharat Mataka Jai. Nagaland is a declared state, which we call it Nagaland for Christ. Bharat Mata is not a Christ, according to me. So where are the missionaries? Where are the churches? Where are the spiritual leaders? And why Naga children are shouting slogan? Bharat Mataki Jai. Under the garb of 75th India Independence Day. These are some of the surprises we come across. And therefore, I'm sharing this, uh, my point of view. I would like every section of people living in society of Nagaland to understand what we are doing. And in particular, the leaders of the state. How do they say? Lastly, yes, yesterday, you would have seen the Independence Day speech delivered by the Chief Minister of Nagaland. Union Finance Minister in Parliament recently stated that Nagaland state is indebted. to Reserve Bank of India, 15,800 plus crores of rupees. But yesterday, if you go through the Chief Minister's speech on Independence Day, and the same speech was read by every minister or every leader who hoisted the flag. Yes. Everybody says we are doing well in all development aspects. Our financial position is sound, and so on. Isn't that a fallacy? Who is right? Union Finance Minister on the floor of the parliament says, more than 15,800 crores indebted by Nagaland state. Here, Chief Minister says, we are okay. Our financial position is strong. Then why are they withholding payment of poorer section of people? That is, the great for employees or the work charge employees, teachers' employ uh, salaries, and so on and so forth. And I think this is a great change. For the first time in the history of Nagaland Legislative Assembly, Nipiriyo's government transacted business in Nagaland Legislative Assembly for 15 minutes. Not exaggerating, but for, for 15 minutes and disperse. Is that the way to transact the business of the people? 
So these are two points. I've taken a very long time, but uh, as a respected president has already mentioned, now the moment is open to you if you have any specific questions to ask.